Welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick, and in this video, I want to show you how you can enable client side caching for your ASP.NET Core applications. So, client side caching refers to storing web resources such as images and scripts. So, for example, CSS, JavaScript, and nearly everything what's inside of your www root folder right here. So to enable client-side caching, you simply go to your program.cs, scroll a little bit down and write here where you should see something like use routing or use HTTPS redirection. We can simply add app dot use static files. Now in the newer versions of this template that I'm using right here, static files is already enabled, but we still should configure our cache control header. Now in simple words, a cache control header defines the caching policy for web resources. So for example, how long those files should get stored in the user's browser. In order to create such a header, we simply go ahead and create a new static file options right here inside of that call. Let's say on prepare response equals to context and then goes to, let's create something new here. Let's create a constant int duration in seconds, for example. Let's just set the header for weeks. So let's say 60 times 60 times 24 times seven, that should be a week. Now let's go to the context, dot context, dot response, dot headers. And inside here, we can take the header names cache control. So let's just write down header names dot cache control there we go and we can set the value for this cache control header to be let me just bring it into the next line of code we set the value to be public as a string and then set the max h to be equals to our duration in seconds there we go now our cache control header is configured in a way that all of our static files like images javascript and css is stored in the user's browser for a week. Awesome, and that's the first part of this video. So that's how simple it is already. Now next up, let's add another type of caching, which is storing the created responses of requests in the cache. But before we move on, this is our C-Shop Progress Academy. It's a self-paced online course that teaches you ASP.NET Core, Angular, unit testing, and even C-Shop software design patterns in depth. We offer a 14 day money back guarantee and I'm absolutely sure that this is the fastest way on how you can progress as a C-Shop developer. So please go ahead, check out the link in the description below or popping up right now at the top right corner. And if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead, like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you no longer miss any upcoming C-Shop and .NET related videos because we want to help you become a better C-Shop developer and you should be interested in that. So let's move on to enabling response caching. And there are times when expensive operations has to be accomplished on the server frequently, right? Now, instead of doing the operation every time over and over again, we can simply cache the response, but we will cache it on the server. And we have already created a video on, well, service side caching. So please go ahead and check that one out. But here's just another version of that, or just a smaller version or shorter version, however you like. And for this, we will simply go to our builder right here and we will add builder.services.add response caching. There we go. So that's the first part. Alrighty, let's scroll down. And here where we just configured our use static files, we will also say app.use response caching. There we go. Now this configures a middleware in the application pipeline, which allows us to cache the responses of, as I said, HTTP requests. Now that can significantly improve the performance because we reduce the amount of data that needs to be transferred over the network and the total number of requests that need to be made to the server. So as I said, we have a video on server-side caching already, so please go ahead and check it out. When we receive a request and prepare a response and send it, it will get stored by a specific key. And if another request comes in, the middleware will check in the background, do I already have a response for that? And if so, we will return it, and if not, we will forward it and well, create the response in a natural way. Now it's important to note that response caching is not the best way of caching for all types of responses. So for example, responses that contain sensitive data or dynamic content that change frequently should not be cached at all. But anyways, 
For responses that are static or change infrequently, response caching can be an effective way to improve the performance of your application. So as I said, if you want to take it to the next level, go ahead, check out our other video on server-side caching. Alrighty, and that's it for this video. So please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Check out our c -Sharp Progress Academy if you want to boost your c -Sharp skills. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back in the next video.